lights on. It's time to start curb cuts. Curb Cuts is produced by the Central Coast Assistive Technology Center, made possible by donations from Cal Poly CPTV and Slow Public Access, funded by grants from the Christopher Ree Foundation, Go Forward, the San Luis Obispo County Community Foundation, For Good, Forever, and the California Endowment, increasing access to healthcare for all Californians. Curb Cuts is also sponsored by Max Superstore. And now, Curb Cuts. Hello, welcome to the first episode of Curb Cuts. We're coming to you from the CPTV studio on the campus of Cal Poly. I'm John Lee and this is Paul Mortola, and we're the hosts of this show, which will give you a window into the world of assistive technology and how this unique technology can enable people with disabilities to live as independently as possible. So you may be asking yourself, why the name Curb Cuts? Well, Curb Cuts, as the name suggests, are a break in the sidewalk that allows a person in a wheelchair to go from the street to the sidewalk without having to deal with that barrier. And similarly, uh, assistive technology device is something that can overcome a barrier and enable a person with a disability to do something that they may not otherwise be able to do. So when you look at curb cuts, for example, you can see that uh, mothers with baby strollers, uh, people on skateboards, uh, the vending machine guy, anybody uh, is using curb cuts. So what is assistive technology? Any kind of device or system that can make something accessible for somebody who otherwise couldn't be using it. There's uh, keyboards that can allow us to type that maybe we couldn't see the keys because they're not big enough, the keys are larger. Um, there's sophisticated systems like eye gaze systems that we'll be talking a little bit uh, more about later that are all about allowing people to use computers that have um, no hand use or no other use of their bodies other than their eyes. But assistive technology usually isn't something you can just walk in off the street and find at a store. You'll have to um, come and be evaluated possibly at an assistive technology center like ours. The idea for the show is it's going to be done once a month and it's going to be about a 20 minute show in which we'll show you a variety of different types of technology that are out there as well as featuring some of the folks in our community that use this technology. In an attempt to make it as accessible as possible you'll notice we've got the show captioned and we also have the show audio described for people with visual impairments and the idea with this is that we obviously want this information to be accessible to as many people as possible and when you consider that uh, there are nearly 10 million people in this country that have a hearing impairment and almost 10 million that have a visual impairment, it makes sense to, uh, to make sure that this type of uh, televised uh, medium is as accessible as possible. For more information after each episode, uh, we'll also have a lot of resources listed on our website, uh, www.ccatc.org and um, that will allow you to go into more depth on some of the things that we talk about and show you today. We're really excited about showing you um, a, a good friend of ours and her name is Cassandra and we're going to be focusing on Cassandra in today's episode and showing you how an individual like Cassandra who is extremely bright and extremely motivated um, may have some challenges in using a computer in a traditional sense. Cassandra is unable to use the, the computer using a keyboard or a mouse and she drives and uses the entire computer um, with her eyes using an eye gaze system. So with that being said we really um, are appreciative of having Cassandra on the show and uh, we hope you enjoy the, the video that we have uh, to show you, show you about Cassandra and her um, eye gaze system. Technology has been a big impact on me and my life. Without technology, it would be hard to talk to other people. Cassandra Province is a bright 20-year-old woman with cerebral palsy. Amongst other things, this condition limits the control she has over her muscles, including not being able to speak. Cassandra uses an eye gaze system to communicate with others. Cassandra is an experienced eye gaze user with very good control despite her uncontrollable movement. Because I developed tremors, the eye gaze worked the best for me. Here's how it works. A camera is mounted below the eye gaze monitor to track the movement of Cassandra's right eye. She's able to use her eye to quickly point and click on objects on the screen. 
To click on a letter or object, she focuses on the target for about half a second. It's important that she keeps her head still as possible so the camera can track her eye movement accurately. The eye gaze system has an on-screen keyboard for communication that allows her to type what she wants to say and have it spoken out loud by a built-in speech synthesizer. I have been using the eye gaze for 10 years. She can type many lines or paragraphs and save them to be spoken later. This system also allows her to program several pages of frequently used phrases that she can click on and quickly have spoken. Cassandra primarily uses the communication system to talk with her family while at home and with her co-workers at the regional center where she volunteers. Cassandra plugs her eye gaze system into her home computer and it acts as her keyboard and mouse. My eye gaze allows me to use the computer mm. like a regular person. Just as you would expect, she is able to surf the internet, email her friends, download music, and play internet games. I like writing mm. poetry, hanging out with my friends. I like to mm. play games on Pogo and go out. Cassandra uses a word prediction program on her home computer called WordQ. As she begins to type each word using her eye gaze, WordQ presents a list of words that it thinks she's trying to type. If the word she wants is in the list, she simply chooses this corresponding number and the word is instantly completed. WordQ also has a speech output capability that Cassandra can use when she is communicating with others. Sometimes the pronunciation from this computer program is not always accurate the first time, but it can be corrected. My favorite musician is Ariel Lamine. Cassandra's eye gaze system is portable and it is attached to her wheelchair with a daisy mounting system. This secure mount safely holds the eye gaze monitor and camera at the correct eye tracking distance. Cassandra believes the system isn't successful for her outdoors even though it's portable. The changing light conditions affect the camera's ability to track her eye movements. Cassandra volunteers once a week at Tri-Counties Regional Center. She takes her eye gaze system along so she can communicate with staff and operate their computer. One of her primary job duties is to use the internet to research medical information requested by the staff. High blood pressure, mm. cholesterol, what's good, mm. what's bad. Cassandra enjoys her eye gaze system but hopes the future technology will allow for easier communication. What I would like to see in the future technology is for someone who can't use their hands, like me. A faster system. The eye gaze works best for me. It's the fastest. Curb Cuts will be right back after this message from the California Telephone Access Program. What? Please speak up. What are you saying? Do you have difficulty hearing on the telephone or any other problem using the phone? Use one of these specialized phones free from the state of California. These amazing phones help anyone who has difficulty hearing or seeing or moving or remembering or speaking. And these are free to California residents who need them. So help yourself, a friend, or family member. Call the California Telephone Access Program. So you saw, just saw how well the uh, eye gaze or eye tracker system worked for Cassandra. And, um, but it's important to know that this type of technology isn't for everybody, or it's not going to work really well for everyone. And some of the key things that you'd want to consider are obviously having good vision to do it and good control of your eyes, as well as the ability to keep your head relatively still. The other thing is uh, calibration of the device and having good lighting. Environmental factors play into it as well. And that was one of the challenges we actually had in uh, trying to film Cassandra is that the actual lighting that we were using uh, could have a, a negative effect on the ability for eye gaze system to work. The cost for these devices tends to be uh, pretty high, anywhere from about $5,000 all the way up to almost $18,000. Um, so you can see that um, it's still not quite something that uh, is easily within reach for everybody. There are some other technologies uh, available that can uh, take advantage of your head movement. And some of these are uh, infrared head pointing devices, one of which we're going to demonstrate for you is called the Head Mouse Extreme. And the way this works is that there's a camera that sits on top of the computer monitor or screen, and it sends a, a light beam towards uh, your head, and on which you're going to have uh, a reflective dot, either on your forehead or on a pair of glasses. 
and this uh, light beam bounces off that dot back to the camera. Uh, the camera sends the signal to the computer and basically tells it, uh, interprets what your head movement is in relation to, uh, or translate your head movement, I should say, into uh, mouse pointer movement on the computer screen. Usually, uh, in order to type on the screen, just like you saw Cassandra using an on-screen keyboard, you would use the same thing like the built-in Windows keyboard uh, that we're going to be showing you uh, that allows you to uh, move your head to the key that you want to type on, either hold your, your position or use a, a switch to click on it to uh, activate the key. There are also systems that allow you to use your mouth to, to um, control a device that, that acts as a mouse. And one of these is a, a mouth or a chin operated joystick. And the way these work is uh, there's a, a sip and puff straw, which, which basically acts like a joystick that you use your, either your mouth or your chin to move, and that moves the cursor on the screen. So obviously this is gonna place a lot less uh, demand on your ability to move your head but you obviously have to have pretty good control of your, your chin or your mouth to, to do this. And then the, the straw has a sip and puff capability which allows you to do the mouse clicks. So while this might not be as fast as an eye gaze system or um, the infrared head tracking system that we showed you, it can allow you to, to uh, still get to where you want to go without necessarily being as fatiguing. The range for these tends to be similar to the, um, the head the head mouse uh, device that I showed you. Uh, it's kind of in the, the 500 on up to uh, the $2,000 range. And again, for all these devices, um, you can get more information if you go to our website and we'll have links to some of the specific ones that are out there. The one we haven't really gotten into as much is uh, one that's even more mainstream than any of these and that's voice recognition technology. This has got the mouse obviously and the keyboard built in because you can use your voice easily to do both. That gives you a, a kind of a starter on uh, hands-free technology for accessing the computer. And there's even more kinds of technology that are available that we have. Um, we look at also, like John's talked about, we kind of uh, have talked about technology that's from really a low level to a very high level. We haven't really mentioned um, some of the things that we do for ergonomics, um, that we can kind of create work environments that are much more healthy for individuals, that um, whether, you're, whether you have a disability or you don't have a disability, there are lots of other technologies that we will cover um, during this show. There's all sorts of phone accessible kind of technology that allows individuals with visual impairments or hearing impairments or even mobility impairments to have phones that cater to these individuals. And as part of our program, we are um, a representative for the uh, California Telephone Access Program, CTAP, which allows individuals, any individuals in California, are eligible for free phones if they have a qualifying disability, which would be vision or hearing or mobility impairments. There is technology available that allows us to control lights, to control um, computers, just about anything that we can imagine there are, we're able to control with these kinds of systems. Next month we'll really be looking at um, low vision technology. Um, we mentioned earlier that we had a grant through the California Endowment and they've allowed us to, um, to implement a program that's a demonstration center and a lending library of assistive technology specifically designed for individuals who have vision impairments. Um, in addition, uh, the grant allows us to have technology for individuals with hearing impairments. So we have a wide range of that technology that we'll be showing you and um, demonstrating and having um, current users of that technology show you how it works and how effective it is in changing their lives and making them more functional. We'd like to finish today's episode with showing you um, another good friend of, friend of ours, uh, Maisha, who is um, going to be using our beach wheelchair out at Avila Beach. This wheelchair um, is for individuals with mobility impairments. It's free of charge. Um, you can check it out at Avila. Um, it will soon be at the new hotel at Avila. Um, but right now, if you come to our website, you'll be able to find the links to, on how to check that wheelchair out and how to use it. We wanted to share a little bit about the grants that we received to put on this program and to run the programs that we have at our center. Um, we've been graciously um, funded by several different organizations. One is the Christopher Reed Perales Foundation, which is a large uh, sponsor for this project. 
doing has made this possible, uh, purchased equipment for this show. Um, it's a very important sponsor for allowing us to kind of get this information out. We have other uh, grants through the San Luis Obispo County Community Foundation, and they're providing funding for a lot of the technology and a lot of the resources that we're going to be using and uh, making our program more accessible for um, viewers who possibly cannot see and, and viewers who cannot hear. We also have been sponsored by um, the Mac Superstore um, for this beautiful monitor that we have, 23 monitor that we have behind us has graciously um, donated that to this show and program so that we can kind of do our editing and um, do lots of our work related to this show uh, using that monitor. So we're very grateful for that as well. We also want to thank um, John Soares and Adrian Holerman here at CPTV for um, helping us with the show. We look forward to working with them um, uh, in coming episodes. Uh, we hope uh, you've appreciated uh, uh, some of the information we've given you today about assistive technology and, um, and how this technology kind of fits in with the whole curb cut idea about not only being useful to people with disabilities, but to society at large. So, thanks. See you next month. For more information about the technology you saw in this episode, please visit our website www.ccatc.org and click on Curb Cuts.